What's going on, y'all? In loving you is wrong, bitch. I don't want to be right. Look, season number two, <laughs> episode one. I mean, for it coming back, it was kind of slow, but it was good in the same time. Because, look, they, they kind of dragged it out a little bit, but, you know, it's like a soap opera. So, you know, we ain't finna get everything all at once. So, we started off the episode with, um, you know, where it ended up last last season. Marcy found out about Randall cheating with Alex. Alex, you know, that bumper sticker that was on her uh, car called Pepper. Bitch, that was her name in the text. Randall was Mrs. Baxter, so it couldn't seem like she was cheating with somebody. You know, she was talking to a girlfriend or whatever. His name for her was Pepper, and it was on her bumper sticker. So that's how Marcy put two and two together. Because, you know, Marcy was irking the fuck out of just about everybody. Like, girl, you can't see what's going on right underneath your nose. But, uh, you know, she got it together. So, she getting pissed off. She going at Randall. She trying to leave the house. Randall ain't letting her go. They fighting. They arguing. She trying to whoop his ass. You know, it's a good thing that Randall did have a little bit of self-control and didn't beat her ass. Because then I would have been like, nigga, it's your fault. So, you, how dare you put your hands on her? But, you know, you always get that one nosy neighbor who just so happens to be outside at the time that altercation is going on inside somebody's house. This lady, she was walking past. She was walking her dog and all that stuff. And, um, you know, she trying to see. She called the cops. And when she called the cops at the call center, who answered the phone, just so happened to be Esperanza. She was like, you know how old people are. They can't get straight to the point. Girl, listen, <laughs> there's a domestic disturbance like this, shouting and screaming at this house. It was like, are you sure? Look, let me. T what's the address? It said, no, let me just tell you, like, they just, they just screaming so loud. And I'm just like, girl, what is the address? And she get an address. And that's is like, mm, I know that address. Are you sure? Girl, yes. Okay, we're going to send the squad car out there. Just so happened, Eddie and Lucius, okay, we got another Lucius. Well, we had Lucius first on here. Okay, I get it. I get it. You know, Eddie and Lucius in the car. They get the call. They was like, damn, that's uh, uh, Marcy and Randall's house. Okay, we got this. We'll check it up. Just so happened. And, you know, uh, Esperanza, she calling Kelly to see what's going on. And was like, girl, go over there and see what's happening with Marcy and Randall and all this shit. By the time um, Lucius and, um, you know, Eddie get there, Marcy is over it. Marcy is on that couch. She just all fall out, like, for the moment. You know, she just a little bit numb and do it's a dude right about now. And he was like, Eddie was like, did she touch, did he hit you? She was like, no, I hit his ass. And he was like, you know, he can't file charges against you. Oh, can, can I file charges against him for emotional abuse and all this other shit? And I said, oops. And she was like, because that motherfucker been cheating with the bitch next door. I said, damn. <laughs> You know, when you mad, you put emphasis on words. The bitch next door. I was like, that's true. And you didn't see it, girl. She was all up in your house, too. But uh, <laughs> it was just so funny. Lucia's trying to calm Randall down to see. Well, Randall was just so calm and cool with it. Like, I don't know. Like, it was just a regular thing. It didn't face him. And this is the thing. They got the right actor to play this because when I was at, I seen him in real life, you know, at that party and Randall looked crazy for real, for real. Like at one point he was walking around and he had that fast walk. Like he was, on, look, it was just, I was like, that's why they got him to play this part because he played so well. But, you know, he was just so psychotic looking. I'm like, you are a psychiatrist and you're crazy as fuck. And I said, go fucking figure it going hand in fucking hand. But, um, you know, after that, um, Marcy was like, let me go get my bags and you can take me out of this house cause he ain't gonna let me leave. I was like, oops. Okay. So guys being guys, you know, y'all talk about female gossiping. They didn't spread this word like wildfire. Okay. You know, Eddie, Lucius telling Eddie what he said. You know, Eddie telling Lucius what, um, Marcy said. Ooh, she said that, you know, he was out here cheating with the bitch next door. And then Kelly was standing out there, and they looking at Kelly in some type of way, like, uh, because that's who they think it is. And then, you know, Lucius tells Esperanza, because they go back to the place, to the police department, and um, he trying to get all up in her business, like, so, um, you going to Brad's party tomorrow? And it was like, bitch, why you want to know if we're going to, or tonight or whatever? It was like, Eddie got you spying on me. 
she come out there to Eddie. Eddie irks the fuck out of me, okay? Eddie irks the fuck out of me because he does too much, all right? Eddie looked like he probably was cheating on Esperanza during their marriage, and he probably was a bit of a control freak. And we already know he's remarried, but he married to old girl, the old Yolanda chick, only for her money, okay? That's why he put up with her. And he was like, damn, Lucius, you can't, um, you can't, uh, uh, make it better than that because you're supposed to disguise it trying to, you know, slide it in there and see what's going on. He was like, get the fuck out of here, rookie, and all that shit. And he was like, so you going to the party? She was like, yes, I'm going to the party. He was like, well, I'll see you there. And I'm just like, oh, Eddie, he is so sexist. And it just disgusts me the way he be talking to her. He was like, seeing what's going on with the Marcy situation. It was like, you know, I'll tell you what happened if you give me a kiss. Come kiss these lips. And I was like, really? Bring that sweet ass over here. I'm sitting here like, you are in a police department. And all this, this, this sexual harassment and all this stuff. It just don't. Somebody bring him up on some charges, okay? <laughs> you know, she was like, fuck all that. And then I think he eventually told her that, you know, basically Marcy said that Randall was cheating with the bitch next door. Okay, so Esperanza putting this up in her memory bank like, damn, I can't wait to tell Natalie this shit because this is fucked up because she thinking it's Kelly. You know, everybody want to think that it's Kelly. Speaking of Natalie, her son, Jesse, you know, they still up in the house or whatever. And at this point in time, y'all remember last season, Jesse had just came out of jail on probation, you know, and Natalie was having a hard time kind of trusting him, but she got him a job at her place of work and you know, he was responsible for closing up at night. And when he closed up, he forgot to lock the door or whatever at one point. And some people came in and robbed the uh, store, took the money, whatever. And they tried to blame it on him. And Natalie was like, Natalie, in a sense, tries to blame it on him too. Because it's like, once a criminal, always a criminal. I can't trust you. I knew this was going to happen. And he knew, he figured out who did it. Because dude, uh, Quad or whatever, Quan. He kept on trying to get him to go back into the streets and shit. And he was like, no, that ain't what I'm about right about now. I'm trying to go on that straight now. And so he stole the money and he whooped his ass and took the money off of him and gave it back to the uh, to Natalie to get back to the store so she can keep her job. Natalie, you know, so I guess after Jesse did all of this, um, Natalie kind of softened her grip on him a little bit. And, you know, she he was telling him... You know, she was, he was telling her, you got to be cool on Lucius because he a good guy. She was like, all of a sudden, you like Lucius? He was like, well, he a good guy, okay? You know, it is what it is. And so, he was going to go out and look for a job or whatever. Natalie comes out with her, I mean, with him. And downstairs in the courtyard is Quan and his boys or whatever. They don't live there, but they, you know, trying to, I guess, fuck with Jesse because of what happened. And Natalie bossed up like, bitch. Don't let all these kids fool you. Don't don't let, you know, what I look like fool you. Because, bitch, I've been around here longer than you've been alive, okay? And I've been through some things and I did some things, all right? And I put that out on your ass, okay? Now, if you put a touch of hair on my son's pretty little head, okay? And I will fuck you up. She made them threats a couple of times. And she was like, y'all don't even live here. Get the fuck on. Bye, Felicia. When she said bye, Felicia, I said, no, you just lost the argument right now. So... No, don't say that shit. I'm so over bad, Felicia. Take that out. You know, but they did leave. Jesse went on about his way. He was like, Mama, you embarrassing me. I was like, boy, shut up. Better be glad he, uh, she cared enough to stand up for your ass. You know, that's how she's showing her love for you. Like, she's trying to trust you again. But it was cool. So, we move on from that to... Like, the episode, it really wasn't much to go off. So, this probably ain't even going to be a long review. But, um... What was the next thing? I think it was Natalie and Esperanza wind up meeting up together. And they were on their way to the party, to Brad's party. Now, Brad is about to have, this is his birthday party. This is what they've been planning last season. Everything been building up to this moment. And it was just so fucked up that this shit had to happen at his damn party. So, Esperanza and Natalie... <laughs> they going over to Kelly's house and they was like, man, I feel type of weird because they thinking that it was Kelly that, um, you know, Randall was cheating with. And 
the way that they came up into her house, they came up into her house, she turned around, she was like, girl, yeah, we ready to go, let, let me get this, and when Kelly turned around and looked at her, and shout out to the character, the girl that played Kelly, because she gonna be in the new, um, Kevin Hart film with Will Ferrell playing his wife, um, Get Hard, you know, some of these women on here come off of, some of these characters that be on, um, Tyler Perry's shows go off and be on other shows too because the girl that the woman that played Natalie was playing a detective on how uh um how to get away with murder. I was like, I spot your afro anywhere. But um yeah. Kelly turned around like, why y'all looking at me like this? Cause they was looking at her like, bitch, how dare you? And I was like, so y'all gonna size her up in her own damn home? Okay. And give her all this attitude. Kelly was like, what's going on? So you having an affair with Randall? Wait a minute. Who told you that I was fucking with Randall? It don't matter. Did Alex tell you that? Wait a minute. Alex got some damn nurse and she told you that. Who the fuck told you that? Well, who told us that was really Lucius and Eddie? Hold up. First of all, what? It was like they just said that, you know, Marcy was like, you know, Randall was cheating on him. Cheating on her with the bitch next door. And Kelly clocked their ass so quick. She was like, first of all, I'm not a bitch. And second of all, I don't live next door to them. I said, oops, that is so true. She lives two doors down. And I was like, <laughs> and they was like, oh, because Kelly, Kelly was the first one of the group to find out besides no, yeah, she was the first one to find out, find out. Then Marcy found out with them text messages or whatever. Um, no, Marcy found out with the text messages and then she told Kelly and Kelly and she told Kelly that the, the girl name was Pepper and Pepper saw, and Kelly saw the bumper sticker and she was like, this bitch. And that's, there you go. She was like, you got to tell her ass. Okay. That's good. That's good. Okay. I get it. I get it. But yeah, so they go over to Brad's place and it's a little surprise party. He come up in there, everybody all dressed up and all good and everything. And they're like, oh my God, hi baby. He was like, oh my God, surprise, surprise. I didn't know this was going to happen. I was like, bullshit. But, um, you know, acting all surprised and everybody all good or whatever. And Eddie up there trying to give um Esperanza a drink. Esperanza like, I'm not trying to play with you, okay? You know, whatever shit you're trying to slay, I'm not here for it, all right? Go about your business, boo. So, Randall comes in. Randall comes in, and I think he gave them a gift or whatever. I don't know if he gave them a gift, but it was just all the way fucked up. It was all the way fucked up because at this point in time, he don't know that um, Natalie and Esperanza know. He don't know that Kelly know or whatever. But he gets in there, and it's just that you have to be crazy in the sense that not only are you fucking your best friend, one of your best friends, girl, wife, not girlfriend, but wife and mother of his kids, and y'all live next door to each other, you come into his house and you can't even hide the fact that you have feelings for this girl. You're standing on the wall looking psychotic as hell just staring at the girl, okay? And then when you give her a hug, you don't just give her a hug. You got your neck nuzzled, your face nuzzled all in her neck, your hand going down her ass. Natalie caught it. Kelly caught it. Esperanza going to play stupid like she ain't see shit, you know. And I'm just like, girl, what? He just standing on the wall just looking like, Ugh. Alex, at this point in time, whatever happens to you happens to you because... He crazy. He look like he you gonna be the bitch that he started whooping ass on. You know what I'm saying? He just look like if you don't, if you was to really say that you wouldn't want to fuck with him no more, he was just gonna fuck you up for real. You know, he just gonna stalk your whole life for the rest of your life, okay? Because that baby is his. And you can't tell me no different. So, <laughs> Alex was like, let me go to the bathroom right quick there. And she goes upstairs. Not even five seconds later, Randall runs up behind. Natalie peeps this like, ain't this some bullshit? I was like, yeah, give us some time, okay? You know, don't make it so obvious. And he follows her into the bathroom and basically like, you know, Marcy knows. How did she know? She found out about the text messages and stuff and the emails. She was like, damn. It was like, um... You know, Brad don't know. And he's still trying to, he was like, I I'm crazy for you. I can't stop thinking about you. I want you so bad. And I was like, you are in this man's house. You have no respect. She was like, my husband is downstairs. Don't touch me. And he was trying to kiss her and all that shit. You know, he come out the bathroom. He come nosy ass Natalie. And this time I was kind of here for Natalie being in this because I, I just wanted him to know that people know. And Natalie bust his ass out like, look. 
this is a married motherfucking woman. Why are you doing this? This is fucked up and all this shit, yada, yada, yada. He was like, girl, whatever. And he went downstairs. Um, Alex come out the uh, bathroom. She was like, why are you doing this? You know, everybody figured it out that it's you. Okay, girl, you got to stop. This. this is just fucked up. It's all the way around fucked up. She feeling some type of way. Mind you, before I think Randall come down. <laughs> and at this precise moment. <laughs> Is when Marcy brings her drunk, trashed ass back into the pitch. She was gone for the rest of this episode, and she showed up at the end. And she showed up with a bang. And I'm telling you, she deserves to be like that, okay? Bitch, you've been cheating on me. I'm trying to have your fucking baby. I can't get pregnant, but you get another bitch pregnant? She don't even know that old girl that the pregnancy, the baby made me his. Oh, wait, wait till she found that out. Or did she find that out? I can't remember. But look. She did all that shit. <laughs> and she walked in. She was just so out of it. <laughs> Y'all saw when Odu had that drink. She pulled that drink right out of his hand and started drinking. <laughs> that shit was funny. She was like, happy birthday, Brad. Here's your present. Read it. Look at it. Open it up in front of everybody. They was like, uh-uh, get out of here, girl. Get out of here. Randall trying to take her outside and all this shit. Everybody come outside. And, you know, she... um. Calls on the scene. Eddie already outside. Lucius took her out. And it was like, you were sleeping with her under my notes the whole time. And then, you know, Kelly trying to get um get her. And uh, Eddie was like, uh-uh, you don't touch it. She was like, this is my friend. And he said, you got a funny way of showing it. And I said, Eddie, no, this ain't for you. This ain't for you. You got your, you got your stuff. Your, your information crossed up. Just shh, let them figure this out. And then they was looking like they took uh Marcy inside or whatever. And they was basically like, <laughs> they was like... <laughs> But I thought she just said that that was the bitch next door that she was she he was she know why they and he was like the bitch next door and they figured it out and they looked at the house and they was like oh and so when Randall came outside no Randall was had his um he was leaning up against the car acting like the victim like oh shit you know like my world and I'm just so hurt he leaned against the car I was like whatever and this was the one and only time I was very much here for Eddie and his attitude and his and his just just being him because that motherfucker got pissed off and he said let me talk to you for a minute randall and punched the shit out of him and you know when they went back inside no uh brad came out and was like why you touch my friend like that he was like this motherfucker ain't your friend and then marcy was like nah he ain't your friend go back up in there and open up your gift and he go back in there and he opened it up and marcy then printed out all the motherfucking text messages and email in the motherfucking stack Alex was trying to hide it, but he was like, give me that shit. And he was just reading it, reading it. And he dropped that shit. He went right outside and he, bop, 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 fuck Randall ass up. And I said, that was very much deserved. Very fucking much deserved. And he was limping his ass on the way and um, ran, uh, Brad pulled the fuck off. I was just glad Randall got his ass whooped. But even with that ass whooping, Randall still ain't going to stop. Next week, child. It's going to be a mess. Um, Brad fucked up talking about something. Take this. If you love me, take this gun and go blow um, Randall's brains out. I was like, you done a little much. I understand, but you done a little much. He tried to suffocate Alex in his arms. And I was like, lover's embrace is deadly. Okay. <laughs> That's what it was like. But, you know, for a little opening, it was a little, it was a little slow. But, you know, the scenes was dragged out just a little bit. But, you know, it kept my attention because I, you know, I see the first season. I wanted to know what was going to happen. But, yeah, I'll be reviewing these. And, um, yeah, I will see you guys later. Peace.